Right, so this morning it's a beautiful day in the Amazon and I am heading off to put a camera trap in. Uh, Diego, who's one of the researchers here, uh, came back from a walk the other day and found some fresh Jaguar prints. So I'm heading up the trails to go and put a camera trap in and fingers crossed we might get something really exciting. Uh, I've got everything kitted up. Um, just need to plug a few things in and recharge some batteries because I only get power for two hours a day. I need to make sure everything's on before I leave, but then we'll head into the jungle and see what we can find. Let's go. I've been walking for about five minutes and already I am sweating. The jungle is just such a humid and warm place, but I don't know, it's got quite a nice feel to it. Um, so I'm wandering up the trails to where Diego, one of the researchers uh, yesterday, found some Jaguar prints. And hopefully uh, we have a couple of spots there where we scouted out for a camera trap and I'm gonna go and put one of those in. Um, you know, with the feedback, the, uh, the cats look like they're moving away from home, so I'm going to set up um, so that it might be walking through rather than back towards camp. And uh, fingers crossed, get it all in. But to just be walking around in the jungle is absolutely glorious. I mean, it's so incredible to get to come to places like this. You know, the Crees Foundation, who you know are in charge of this area, basically it used to be a farm, and that farm was logged so there was absolutely no trees in this bit and the first section i'm walking through um, was completely cut clear cut for farming now as i progress onto the reserve i'm going to get to sections that were partially cut and then areas that were selectively logged but the whole area was actually pretty much devastated um, as as a result of human activity but with the crees foundation's investment they've bought the area and they're putting it back uh, to how nature intended it to. And it's amazing that, you know, within these trails and within the reserve itself, the areas that have been regenerating over the last, um, you know, 10, 15 years are already full of life. I mean, we walked down this trail the other day and there was loads of squirrel monkeys, capuchins, loads of stuff. And deeper into the reserve, you've got the endangered spider monkey as well. And it's just stuff like that that really shows that conservation can have a huge impact in these different places in the world and a lot of people say that you can sit back and nothing's really going to change but I think this is such a good um, such a good example of where conservation and a bit of kind of just get up and go has really helped to restore a habitat um, that could have been so easily destroyed and lost and with the idea that the huge um, you know predators are back really proves that this ecosystem is thriving. So hopefully we'll get some shots to really showcase what an amazing place uh, the Crees Foundation and the Manu National Park is. But right, let's get cracking. <laughs> So I've been walking a little while now and I've now moved into um, the partially cleared forest and immediately you can see how much denser it is. We've got the lovely moss covered trees, these small buttress roots of the where the trees are starting to come back and it's immediately got that denser jungle feel that is precisely what I'm looking for on my camera traps. The wide open shots as much as they're nice, they're easy to do, they don't have the same jungle feel that I need and so looking for nice trees that have buttress roots and stuff like that makes for much better pictures it just adds that extra interest in the frame it's 
time for a water break. Mmm. Wow. Sometimes I certainly feel like one of the luckiest people on the planet to do this job. <sighs> Where would you rather be on a Monday morning, eh? Absolutely gorgeous. Right, that way. So something super exciting. Um, been wandering along the trails and luckily where Diego said um, I've come across the Jaguar prints that he spotted uh, yesterday. And look at these, okay. Just here, look at that. The sticks are put in so when the researchers find prints, uh, we know not to record them again. But this is very exciting. They're moving straight down the trail, straight towards the location where I'm hoping to set my camera trap up. So uh, all the signs are looking really, really good uh, for this spot and this location. And Oh, I don't even want to go off thinking about getting that shot, but it would be pretty darn cool. Right, so we are here, and this is where I'm going to be setting up the camera trap. Nice buttress route to one side, a lot of moss on it, really kind of jungly feel, and a big rock on the other. Great thing about that is it makes a very small gap uh, that kind of pushes the animal through, means that I'm going to be, be able to be more concise uh, in terms of my framing and everything like that, um, and fingers crossed we'll get some cool shots. Now most of the prints that we've had are all moving um, away from camp, so I'm going to try some compositions with the camera from this side looking this way first um, and see how they look. If they look good, we'll use that because we're more likely to get a headshot, but if I'm not happy with the composition, I might try it off to the side uh, for a more angled approach of the animals moving through. Um, I always want to go for that more picturesque shot than just kind of getting one. Um, so we've got to make sure the composition's right before we kind of apply everything and get all the sensors set up. But right, that's the first job. Let's go. It's been a pretty long morning, but finally I think we are ready to go. Um, what I've got is the camera all set up in position. Hoods on to keep it protected from the rain. Everything's ready to go. The scout is positioned behind me. Uh, it's got an exact diagonal that goes straight through the gap that I'm hoping that my jaguar slash other animal uh, comes through. My primary light is off to the right hand side about 45 degrees up and over. And then I have a secondary light up in the corner um, and that has a bit of black foil on it just to mask where some of the light's dropping. I'm trying to keep it quite concise to a, like, a little pool of light. Now, I'm shooting manually for this because I'm pretty much at midday today and it's a really sunny day. Um, and dialing in the exposure at 200th of a second, I'm easily getting some nice background and foreground. Um, but the thing is at night, if I was using aperture priority, um, what I'd get is a really long exposure that means I could miss multiple images and with the lighting set up how I have it I've got some nice ambient jungle as well as um, just the animal itself so by using a manual shutter speed of a hundredth of a second I can guarantee that I can get five or six frames off um, I'm probably gonna set to six in succession to give me more accuracy and a higher likelihood of getting the shot I'm after um, if this works really well, I might switch it out to aperture priority um, over the next couple of weeks and see if I can get a nighttime shot with a bit more ambient light. Um, but to start with, I just want to get a shot, see what it looks like, um, and then work from there. But even with it in manual, it's looking really, really good. We've got some nice light, um, nice bit of detail with a tree and stuff like that. So it's really looking like a nice shot. All I need now is a Jaguar to walk right through it, um, and that would be ideal. But yeah. That's wildlife photography for you, and hopefully, fingers crossed, we've still got a month. So all I'm gonna do now is uh, finish off everything, make sure everything's waterproof, nailed down, everything like that, and also add a bit of this um, to the post that I have the camera on. Simple reason is it stops stuff like termites and ants from climbing up and getting into my camera trap housing, um, and hopefully that should help reduce some of the bugs coming to my traps. But uh, after that, I'll run through, do a quick test shot, make sure everything's looking like I want it. And then I'm heading back for a shower because I've been in the jungle for a good couple of hours now and I'm really starting to smell nice and sweaty. 
and I'm going to be covered in sweat bees and mosquitoes any minute. They're all starting. They're all these little sweat bees that are just great. Um, but yeah, oh, some butterflies come to join me as well. Right, let's get it done and then let's get moving. Just finally packing everything away. I've got beautiful little butterflies all sat on my bag. They're just picking up all the salt and sweat from my bag. It's really cool. It's absolutely gorgeous. I'm gonna slowly move him onto a leaf because I gotta go, but uh, wow so awesome to be so close to so much just incredible wildlife so everything's in place and the last thing i'm going to do is just walk straight through the trap and check that everything goes off before i go home uh should take six pictures let's see what it does one four five six perfect <laughs> So I'm nearly back to camp and that's pretty much it for today's video. Uh, join me next time when we will go and check some camera traps and see what we've got. I'm actually going to be putting out a couple more over the next uh, couple of days to increase my chances. I've got three uh, systems that to put in place so hopefully we'll get something. But for now, I'm going to go jump in the shower because I am sweaty. Right, see you guys.